So going from theory to application, where did Benford's Law start? Well, in the, um, in the early 1880s, uh, an astronomer uh, noticed that the pages in the front of his log, log uh, rhythmic tables were more worn than the pages in the back of the book. Now, the tables were used to multiply and divide large numbers, and this individual uh, was uh, named Simon, and he published his paper uh, on his observations in 19, um, uh, sorry, 1881, but did not offer any proof nor any practical use uh, of, this, uh, of this observation. So the, obviously the, the article was promptly forgotten. Now let's fast forward ahead a little bit. In 1938, Benford, Frank Benford, noticed the same thing, but he was completely unaware of Simon's previously published article. Benford actually conducted some tests on relatively uh, large populations and some with smaller numbers in uh, looking at areas of rivers, baseball averages, atomic um, atomic weight of atoms, electricity bills, etc. While he did not come up with any practical um, use for this observation, he did publish a paper that, that had a better reception uh, than Simon's did and it was well and became known as the Benford's Law. Now, if we uh, move uh, a slide, uh, please, Ashley, um, this, this kind of outlines uh, some of the areas that he actually uh, made his observation, but if we move another slide over, again, Ashley, thank you, this kind of shows you uh, the graphical layout of the um, various different averages that he used from population, batting averages, atomic weight. You could see the first digit average is typically 30%, second digit 18%, so on and so forth. Now let's fast forward a little bit further on and we'll talk a little bit more about the practical use of these numbers in, in a bit uh, during Sunder's uh, portion of the presentation. If we move to the next slide please, Ashley, thank you. Um, we could see a uh, if you're not uh, familiar with this individual, his name is uh, uh, Mark Negrini, a very well-established uh, uh, expert in the domain of data analytics and, and Benford's Law. Now, before we dive into uh, Mark Negrini's contribution, if we talk a little bit, uh, in 1961, uh, Robert Pickham uh, proved that Benford's Law held true no matter the unit of measurement. So that means it doesn't matter what the unit measurement is used, whether it's yen, dollars, feet, miles, or meters, the results of um, Robert's studies showed that, and other interested parties found that, um, invented numbers do not conform to Benford's law. Uh, things that you just pull out from the air and say, oh, we're going to process this uh, in such a way, do not conform to Benford's Law. Benford's Law was uh, used on company financial uh, reports in 1988 and found that companies were not uh, completely honest in their financial reports. Now, the real, now if we take a moment here, the real breakthrough in the practical application of Benford's Law um, came through a, a very well-known individual in, in the domain of, of data analytics, uh, uh, Mark Negrini, which is actually well-known as Professor Mark Negrini, a well-published author as well. The real breakthrough came in 1992 when Mark Negrini, a South African chartered accountant, codified a practical use of Benford's Law. In his 1992 thesis, showed that accounting data conforms to Benford's Law. In 1994, he actually assisted many tax agencies globally in finding suspect uh, tax returns um, uh, from various different co corporations and, and, their, and their filings. Now, from, from there, he worked with companies, uh, even to this day, implementing uh, fraud methodology, implementing analytics, assisting companies like Caseware in establishing and implementing uh, advanced fraud prevention and benefits law methodology within the application to better assist auditors in identifying anomalies uh, effectively on an on ongoing basis. 
Now moving on to the next slide, uh, Ashley, thank you. Now what is the uh, exact term for Benford's Law? Benford's Law is a mathematical law that states that in many real life data sources, the leading or leftmost digit is distributed in a very specific and predictable manner. That is, the number one occurs as a leading digit about 30% of the time, so on and so forth. As the numbers get uh, larger, they occur less frequently. In, uh, in the case of uh, number nine occurring as a leading digit is less than 5% of the time. Moving on to the next slide. Thank you, Ashley. So Benford's law does not apply to all sets of numbers. It's not a, a bulletproof thing that can apply to any set of numbers. Uh, for it to apply, the numbers must reflect the size of some phenomenon. Big numbers must refer to big things. There must be no built-in maximum or minimum value, um, and the numbers must not uh, be labels such as highway numbers or social security numbers or flight numbers or sequential numbers in terms of postal codes. But in reality, when we're looking at accounting data, it does conform. 